We've got a body, a woman's body. She's sitting on the edge of the bed. It looks like a hotel room or something. She's got a pierced belly button. She's got her breasts out. She's lifting up her top to show them. She's got a kind of blonde wig. And this woman has my face. It was the end of the year. It was very dark, very rainy. My son was at nursery and I was working from home. And there was a knock at the door. It was someone that I know. He'd said, um, is now a good time to talk to you? I need to talk to you about something. But eventually he explained that um, he'd seen my, recognised my face on a porn site. And actually, at first, I just thought, oh, that's impossible, because I knew I'd heard about revenge porn, um, but I knew that I'd never shared any kind of intimate photo of myself or remotely anywhere with anyone. I needed to see the pictures for myself. So there's a woman, she's sitting on the edge of the bed. She's got my face. Um, she's giving a blow job. Um, it's my face, kind of. It's my nose, it's my eye, it's my fringe. Um, it looks like my jawline, but it's not my mouth. Um, um, the person's skin, the woman's skin, is a lot more tanned than mine would be. Uh, and this woman has exactly my tattoo. She's looking at some text, which is an invitation to humiliate the person in the picture, which is me. I just remember getting more and more upset and agitated and I, and I was shouting, like, why? Why would somebody do that? What have I done to deserve it? Like, what, why would they... Who would want to do this? I don't know how long I was sitting there. And then it was time to go and pick up my son. Everybody that I saw on the street, I just felt like they knew that they had somehow seen the pictures and that they knew this horrible secret about me, which suddenly felt like my horrible secret. Who is there watching him? What can you see? I finally said, right, I want to ring the police. Um, I would like to report this. 
I spoke to a woman who was really kind, really lovely. She said, leave it with me and someone will get back to you. I couldn't get out of bed the next day. I wasn't tired, I just lay there with my eyes wide open. You start suspecting everybody, pretty much everybody. And you rake back over all of the things you might have done in your life that you're not proud of, and imagine how that could become somebody's motive. I'm wearing a pink, sort of uh, silky, floor-length dress which at the time would have been the nicest sort of dress that I'd ever bought, like a dressy dress. It's pink, it's got these um, delicate flowers on it and a bit of a ruffle. This girl, this woman, this me, she's being penetrated from behind. Um, there's a man like holding onto her hips. Um, I think this has been photoshopped from a series of pictures. Um, it, it, this doesn't just come from one photo of me, I think it comes from several. This looks like a real photo. I only know that it's not a real photo because I know those are not my breasts. Someone's put a lot of effort into this. They've had to create a profile, of, they've had to find the pictures. I hadn't had a Facebook account active since 2015, probably. Had they saved them from years ago? But equally, because I do have a public profile as a writer, anybody could Google my name and find pictures of my face. The age range was from 19 to 32. The last photos that they'd used were ones of me pregnant. This is the dress from the deep fake. I remember this really vividly. I was so proud of it. And now, someone's stripped away the dress and grafted on somebody's breasts, and it's like, oh look, we've we've seen through her clothes. We've she's got no secrets, you know. We can we can find you anywhere. I'm on all fours. I, the, the person who's supposed to be me, is on all fours uh, on a really tacky sort of leopard print rug. I'm being strangled with someone's hands around my throat. You can just see his, uh, like the bottom of his torso, I guess, and his like leg, side of his leg and his genitals. And I'm smiling because the face is from the holiday photo. It definitely crept up on me. The, the days and weeks that followed, it was just there all the time. I'd start enjoying myself for a moment. Like, I'd be with my family outside, and then I'd remember. This tide of anxiety and fear. when the police did ring back. I was in a shop. I was trying to scan broccoli through a checkout with the phone under my ear and with my son. 
And then I remember having to have this conversation on the phone in public where a different person from the person I'd spoken to initially just sort of said very bluntly, well, though, there's nothing we can do. It's not malicious communications because you discovered the images through a third party. It's not revenge porn because they weren't real images, so-called. I just remember saying to her, so you're saying that this just falls into a hole in the law? And she said, yeah. And that was that. And I hung up. The nightmare started. Recurring nightmares, always the same thing. There's a underpass not far from here, and I'd always be there, and it would always be night. I would always have a dog with me, like a large, muscular dog on a chain, and I'd have a knife in my pocket. Two men who were dressed like some of the men had been dressed in the manipulated images. This photo of these two men fully clothed, like holding this woman down. She's tied up and being fisted. It was the people from that image. And they would either follow me into the underpass or they'd already be there waiting. I'd go, it's okay, they can't hurt me because the dog's here and because I've got a weapon, I'm okay. And then they'd grab me, they'd get the knife from my pocket and they'd kill the dog. And then they would push me up against the wall. And that's where I'd wake up. I did feel as if those were real images. And it's hard to explain to someone who hasn't seen that with their own pictures, because on the one hand, I can sort of be like, well, what is it really? What have they actually done? They've done nothing to me. But they've planted all this stuff in my head, um, these pictures. I can't unsee any of the images. And I can't, but I can't even see these perfectly, like, unaltered images in the same way either. Like, I now look at that picture, if I saw it independently, and feel like it's a picture of an assault. had to confront a fear. Um, who did this? Everyone. Anyone. Anyone did this. In every single one of those pictures, it's my eyes staring at the camera. But through it all, this person this profile creator, this image hoarder, has no face. 
you don't get a choice about being seen as a woman, I don't think. You don't get to be anonymous in the way that you might, not properly, in the way you might want to be. Um, so what do you do in response to your body and your face being public property?